Good job. What you doing? I'm cracking some maize. That's nice of you to help mommy like that. So we can make some scrambled eggs. Your favorite? Yep. So with our farm fresh eggs, we collect them every day and we put them on the shelf. We do not refrigerate them. We do not wash them. We just brush whatever, you know, excess hay or, or feathers or clumps of poop occasionally off of the shell and set them on our egg shelf. And then when we're ready to use the egg, then we wash it. So we call these European style because in Europe, nobody refrigerates their eggs. It's, it's kind of absurd that we do it here. And the reason why we do it here is because it's been washed. So if you wash your eggs, you do have to refrigerate them because there is a protective layer that the hen applies to the outside of the egg. It's called the bloom. And the bloom protects that egg from any bacteria from entering inside the egg shell. So once you wash an egg or refrigerate an egg, because once it refrigerates, it perspires and washes that bloom off as well. So you have to refrigerate if it's been washed or refrigerated prior, but you do not have to refrigerate a farm fresh egg ever. Um, I've had them last a very long time. I think that's all of them. Oh, there was one more. And you see how beautiful our yolks are. Some of them are lighter than others, and I've always wondered about that because they are fed the same diet. But the one thing I noticed uh, when our oh, this is a green one. Yeah, open it up. The one thing I noticed about um, the chickens when they were free-ranging is that the Americana chickens, which are closer related to the jungle fowl, are the ones that forage the most and, and gather the most That's bugs. That's all of them. That's all of them. And they gather the most bugs and stuff, and I swear that their eggs are usually the richer, darker orange color. And that's the sign of a very healthy egg with lots of nutrition. So we're going to scramble them up and have some scrambled eggs. Yum, with our cast iron. I'm going to put some butter in there. And over here, I've got my chicken bone broth going. So that's just all the bones from our chicken. We had chicken twice this week. One was a whole chicken and one was chicken legs. So I saved all the bones. And I put them in there and covered them with some water and some celery ends, you know, the parts of the celery that I don't really use, um, a whole onion, and um, some carrots. And then I'm just going to spoon those carrots out for the boys because they love their carrots so much. And then everything else will just be strained out. And of course some herbs and salt. And One of the important things to add, you can't, it's too hot, hold on. One of the important things to add to your bone broth while you're simmering it is vinegar. It helps break down the bones, so that gets you more of the nutrients inside the bones. So this right here is my awesome egg shelf. Um, Ryan custom made this for me, and it can be set on a table. See, it's got legs on it. And it can be set up on my bookshelf. So that works really well to keep it out of the way. And usually, every one of these holes is full of eggs. But because our girls are molting, we're down to just a couple of eggs. Just a few eggs a day. Just enough to let us have some scrambled eggs here and there. Not enough for selling right now, unfortunately. And he wanted to stir the eggs, not the hot stuff. So once I've got my bone broth up to a rolling boil, then I lower the heat down to low and let it simmer for two days. Um, you can do this in a crock pot, but I'm just keeping an eye on it and uh, doing that. And you see where Rowan put all of his eggs, all of the egg shells went in the compost. Whatever the chickens won't eat, it'll be composted into a nice new rich soil to add to our garden in the spring. Right, Rowan? Right. You like helping, Mommy? Yeah. Good. I like it when you help me. In some kombucha. Is it yummy? Yeah. Do you love it? So what I have here, folks, is a continuous brew kombucha vessel. Thumbs up for kombucha? 
Because that's for kombucha. If you like kombucha, like the video. Um. Ryan decided not to move the paddock this week, and now the goats are starving because their paddock is not full of green stuff like out here. So they keep having this, the grass is greener on the other side of the fence thing. So I am letting them out on a supervised scout for foraging for food because the boys and I, Ro Ro, were you being mean to him? Don't be mean to I'm him. I'm just making a part. I think he wants the stick because he thinks you're giving it to him. What are we going to do, Rowan? Are we going to finish putting the staples in the chicken tractor so that we can move Rescue Squad in here? Yeah. All right. Let's... I, I just did that move right there. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to work on this while I watch the goats because they're happy to be out. and They're, they're such social animals that they want to stay near me, so I'm hoping that this go smoothly and I don't have any runaway that way I won't have any runaway goat what do you want to touch touch the gray oh because daddy painted it it should be dry now you can touch it eat up that fence line guys lots of good stuff in there Got about half the tractor done clipped. So we got all this clipped to the wires. Chicken wires clipped to the welded wire. So that's nice and secure. Got to work on the other half still. Rowan's making a nice sand castle. Get some water. No, we don't want to play with mud. Just sand is good. Liam's playing with his chalk. And he's so tired, but he's fighting it. So hopefully we can get the other side done before he crashes. Yep, I told you he was fighting it. He fell asleep watching me build the tractor. Well, not build it, but finish up the stapling for Ryan. And the free-range goats are enjoying themselves immensely. Yeah, I know, I let them go in my pepper and tomato garden over there. I figured, why not? It's the end of the season. They're actually just eating mostly the weeds and the peppers. They should stay away from the tomatoes if they know it's good for them. They'll get an upset stomach if they eat those. But they probably won't touch them. So far I haven't seen them touch them. If they do, I'll just have to shake a stick at them and sh scare them off. Get them out. Got it finished. All done. The only thing missing is the chickens. So rescue squad's over there waiting to go in. But Liam woke up because I was yelling at the goats. So I got to bring him in and nurse him and get him comfy. It's hot out here. The goats are all back up. They enjoyed their little outing. Hopefully it won't be something that's going to encourage them to sneak out any. Because they like it out there. But hopefully it'll be good because it gave them a break. So now they'll all take a nap. Okay, it's smoothie time. I'm making a whole family smoothie. So I've got two organic bananas and about two and a half frozen peaches from the summer peach harvest in Georgia. So they're local peaches. And I'm going to add a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of honey, and some goat milk kefir. And it'll be very good probiotic and delicious. I add the delicious milk kefir. Mm. All right, that's a little less liquid than I was hoping for. So I'm going to go ahead and strain my other jar of milk kefir I have going. I have two different strains, one from my sister and one from my mom. So I'm going to strain that one and add that as well. So I just strain my kefir greens. So I can make another fresh batch of goat milk kefir. It's kind of therapeutic. It's like breaking sand. You gotta be gentle. Make sure you don't break the clumps apart or anything, but you don't, you don't wanna hurt them. So 
That's what milk kefir grains look like. And then I just switch those over. And boom, there's my yummy milk kefir. Delicious, good stuff. Probably the hardest part of gardening is going through my huge seed collection and trying to decide which ones to grow. If I can actually get that tiller going and get the ground soft enough to put seeds into, I am going to do some roots. And these are rutabaga, turnip, radish, parsnip, all different kinds of beets and carrots. Um, and then we're also going to do greens. So I have lettuce, kohlrabi, um, spinach, collard greens, kale, the whole nine yards. So we have a variety of assorted seeds here. Um, most of them are from my favorite seed company, Baker Creek. Some of them are cheapo seeds that I got for two cents a pack. I couldn't pass up a deal even though they weren't organic. And Rowan is trying to say thumbs up for seeds. <laughs> It's kind of hard. I got all this kale, and it's kind of hard to to do this um, with the kids, right, Rowan? Right. Because what do you keep doing? I'm doing some sandwiches and this this egg, and I keep putting some sand there. This is what he keeps doing. Liam keeps reorganizing my seeds for me yeah. and Rowan keeps jumping on them with a bouncy ball jumper that's not nice but we'll get it figured out so I, you know the got them all spread out here on the floor I'm gonna go through and pick my favorite ones and